Hi, everybody. My name is Ariadne Albright, and I'm a roster artist for the South Dakota Arts Council. And today I have a project that I want to share with you. And it's based on a very esteemed artist named Romare Bearden. Here's an example of one of his collages. Um, often his work is about the African-American culture that he grew up in in the rural South, as well as um, the uh, cities in the uh, East Coast. So um, you can see a certain liveliness and inventiveness in use of color, space, and um found materials this piece is called jazz kansas city and it really speaks to the nature of creativity which is something that we all have um, it's this act of human beings to bring forth something new that has value um, new way of thinking, new way of looking at something. It's not just for a novelty, uh, not just because it is something new, but it enhances our experience and has the potential to impact uh, future generations, really changes the way we think. So not new for new sake, but um, innovation. And like I said, we all have the potential to be creative, we use it in our daily lives. Um, with artists, there's a lot of different ways to develop that creativity. In the past, it was often through apprenticeship or working with a more seasoned, mature artist. Um, today, a lot of folks go to art school and colleges and universities to learn the fine art trade. That's not always necessary. There's a great tradition of uh, self-taught, and uh, individuals that are just motivated to um, express and explore themselves through, uh, in this case, the visual artist, the visual arts. Uh, folk artists, naive or outsider artists, are those that um, end up being celebrated in our communities, um, even though they might not go through a traditional um, art education. That's not the case with Romare Bearden. He's highly educated and um, ha has a, had a huge impact on our American culture. Here's another example of one of his artworks. This one's called Sunset Express, a uh, collage on panel. And collage just means it's a French word for like gluing or sticking together. And um, uh, certainly he was speaking to um, his rural experience from North Carolina and the South. And um, the deeper you go into some of um, the settings or symbols like the train and the clock, the more um, you can see this story unfold um, because there is um, a great thoughtfulness and um, care uh, to his compositions. Okay, so the next two slides are just way too heavy um, with text, but um, from the Romare Bearden Foundation, I wanted to make sure that if you were interested and wanted to look a little bit more deeply into his life, um, you could go back to this slide presentation or even the website and look uh, closer. As I said before, um, born in uh, the early 1900s in North Carolina and uh, spent his life um, throughout the United States and passed in New York City um, recently in 1988 at the age of 76. And so what these um, paragraphs are going through are his um, educational background as a cartoonist and then through traditional academia or universities, um, some time in New York and in Paris, um, and some of his influences 
in his art over time, African art, Cezanne, Picasso, the Cubists and Surrealists, as well as um, Japanese prints, Chinese landscapes. It's also, um, I think, important to note that he worked as a social worker in New York City. And that, um, just for the nature of the job, uh, speaks to his compassion and his care for other human beings. And that's certainly reflected in the work that he um, created in his lifetime and um, speaks to a little bit of the materials. And then also his home life um, included um, his marriage and then also a great uh, group of uh, artists and intellectual leaders at the time. Um, and that's what I've bolded in here, including other um, uh, African-American artists and uh, influencers. Um, his, his work definitely spoke to the artistic and social issues of the day. And I think that's true of artists when they speak of their own experience. Um, because that's the one thing that we have um, authority over. And it's important um, as an art educator that, that we talk about where our influences come from. And that keeps us from maybe uh, over, over emphasizing another culture, but instead um, appreciating it and understanding the um, like the background or the, the context of it. So again, this is for a later uh, deeper look at Romare Bearden's life. Um, just know that uh, in addition to this great educational background and his exploration of materials, he was also very celebrated in terms of the company that he kept and as well as his publications and art shows um, designing for theaters and magazines illustrator um, and his work is part of the collections of many uh, national museums in our country as well as re um, receiving many awards in his lifetime oh i went too fast including the um, uh, presidential award from uh, bestowed on him from Ronald Reagan. Uh, this piece called School Bell Times, you can see is a combination of um, uh, found materials like um, newspapers and prints collaged or glued together with um, painted areas, uh, cut paper, and that's really uh, what I want you to spend a little time considering before we do this hands-on project. Some of the innovation is in uh, Bearden's work is taking everyday objects or materials that we have around us um, and, and using them, arranging them in an innovative way. School Bell Times, um, you know, is a reflection. Certainly, you can see that it's a it's a rural or farm uh, landscape or place. Um, but the idea of of the old fashioned ringing of the school bell and gathering all the children is one that um, that we still can relate to to this day. Um, Mr. Bearden's uh, experience is might be different than ours culturally from the Midwest area, but is still um, very valuable in reflecting how he's communicating this uh, passage, right? This passage of of um, an important moment in families' lives. So um, now, depending on uh, who's watching this video, um, talking about the nature of creativity or the five traits that define it, 
maybe that's interesting. Maybe it just comes naturally to you because um, so much of the time I found for myself as a visual artist, um, my hands and my brain work in one way and to put things in language is another way to use my brain. So the idea that it, it means we're creative when we associate, when we connect one thing to another, even if they don't necessarily always connect, um, that's, that's just a natural way to be innovative or to solve a problem, I think. Um, a, a natural sense of curiosity to question things uh, is certainly something that I see in creative people. Um, being observant, having the ability to not speak and just watch and look for um, the way things are joining or apart, the different systems that organize what we see, that's certainly um, the way we can use our senses for creative um, exploration. Networking in that, again, that goes back to associating of like how we connect certain elements in uh, traditional ways or in new ways. And then above all, um, a trait of creativity is this ability to experiment and to not look at things as um, success or failure, but just to play and explore and mess around and throw things away because they don't quite work. Um, it's, it's a way to constantly keep growing and, and experimenting. So as I mentioned before, when we're doing, when we're creating visually, um, we're asking that an image or a picture take the place of words. And oftentimes, you know the saying, a picture is worth a thousand words. It means that an image can contain and um, communicate beyond mere written or spoken description. So this is the last piece of Bearden's that I'm going to show you before we get started on the project. And um, this is called a Prevalence of Ritual Tidings. It's a photo montage. So that's a form of collage only using a more um, photographs um, to join together. And you can see that in all of his works, the pieces are fragmented. They're um, the pictures, you know, like the landscape, or there's there's a um, disjointedness sometimes. But in fact, it creates a new, um, fresh way of seeing. And because this figure in profile has wings, there's been um, suggestions of being uh, an angel or of uh, bringing a message like a Christian Annunciation. That's one of the associations. And oftentimes in um, Romare Bearden's work, the train is symbolic for the uh, migration, the great migration of African Americans from the South to the Northern parts of our state um, during uh, the forties and 50s. So let me just say, concerned with effectiveness of communication to the viewer. Oh, so like with all artists, we are interested in what the audience sees. Um, but when historians talk about his work, they speak about this very inner, um, private expression that is just as important as making a picture look good or recognizable to an outside viewer. Does that make sense? There is um, a picture of Romare Bearden making his collages, standing up uh, at his work table in his studio. 
And if you're um, interested in exploring more of his influences, this piece here um, by Cezanne is a um, cubist landscape and you can see references to buildings, rocks and trees, but it's, um, it's a period of art where um, fragmentation and reorganization was was um, one of the one of the goals. Mm, Rene Magritte's piece, this with a man and the apple in front, is is a good example of surrealist um, artwork, which at the time was exploring um, dream imagery, and that's really when we see sort of a break away of a traditional. Um, artwork in terms of the way that it's organized. Uh, lots of things that normally didn't go together are, are juxtaposed or put together. Um, and again, in the interest of uh, a more um, true exploration or expression of, of the artist's vision. And then at the bottom, you know, one of the, the most famous um, 20th century artist, Pablo Picasso, you can see his work on the left. And then if you're comparing it um, to a traditional African mask on the right, you can definitely see how, and you see it in other artists too, how um, the abstraction that was mastered in um, African art of the time was borrowed by Western artists um, as a as a you know inventive way to express not only the um, human figure but the uh, space as well. So those are some of um, Bearden's influences as well. Okay, hands on time. Um, the idea of this project is to take what you have um, in your house as far as paper and collage material. The only real art supplies you'll need are um, scissors and glue of some kind, maybe a glue stick. I have white glue or clear glue. I don't have a glue stick right now, but those will work. And then um, I'm getting old prints and magazines, newspapers. I thought even old mail, um, sometimes packaging that we get from boxes or in the mail have really great design and printing. Um, so what I'd like you to do is uh, gather some things around the house that you have. I also have a blank sheet of copy paper, which is where I could do my collage. Also, I got a file folder, which is a little bit sturdier. Maybe I could cut off the edge here and place it collage. And so um, what I'm going to do is pause this tape for a minute and open some of these papers and cut out or tear some images to work with. Because the idea is this collage isn't just any collage. Um, Romer Bearden talked about uh, the pageant of our daily life. And a pageant to me is like you know, like in a beauty pageant or some kind of parade where, you know, that person is on show as if, and, and people are watching. And sometimes I, I sense that in our own lives that, um, yeah, we care a lot about what goes on in our day. And if we could make a collage about that pageant or parade of our daily lives. What he means by amplifying, it means to exaggerate a little bit. So um, it's probably not going to be a collage of me um, feeding my dogs and sitting down for oatmeal um, for breakfast. It might be a theme uh, 
about either my work life or my home life. And you guys get to decide too what the theme from your own experience is going to be. And then we're going to make a collage that expresses that. Hello again. Uh, it's me, Ari. So I wanted to say that I'm starting to tear um, a lot of pieces out of old magazines and um, newspapers that I have. And some of these, it's not because I read the article, but it's, it's sort of an interesting shape that I might cut out later. Um, I like the maps, even though they're kind of blank on these pages. And um, it's not something terribly political, but sometimes these fires, the pictures I'm seeing, um, or people working, those are kind of interesting to me. And uh, they certainly reflect um, what I think I'm going to work on expressing, which is the pageant of my um, work home life, which um, it's pretty much all I do. <laughs> and so the reason why um, I unpaused is because sometimes you can get very interesting edges by tearing. And I want to encourage you when you're looking through your things that you can just tear things out and it might be something that you'd want to work with. Um, I'll pause now because there's a few things that I'll actually cut the edges out. And this came from a print of an art project I was going to try. Only mine did not turn out as cute as these, but I definitely want to include it. And then I found this in some packaging um, mail, which I also like. So I'm just going to continue to cut a few things out and then I'll come back when we're ready to arrange it. Thank you. Hello again. So um, now I'm starting to put some pieces down. I've got a lot of cut out bits and it's really kind of interesting that you gather these odds and ends and the job we're looking for now is how to arrange them to make it dynamic to look at and then also as an expression of this pageant of our daily life, right? So I started with this uh, white sheet of copier paper that I had and um, what I want to encourage you to do is layer um, things and it's okay if they go off the back because after it dries we can trim it and it'll look even nicer. Um, but just starting to think about arrangements, things that go together in this case because of color and as I said before you know the stock market graph even though it's torn um, is an interesting background and I did it on top of a an article that had a lot of text and again that's just sort of background but it's it's interesting how uh, a theme is starting to emerge and um, what it what I believe it's going to be is that there's um, there's some kind of beauty in all of this um, drama uh, that we hear and are experiencing sometimes in our own life. Um, but my goal is to just steady on, take care of work and take care of uh, my home life and make beautiful things. So that's what I'm sensing is starting to emerge in this collage. I'm gonna pause again and come back when I think it's finished. And again, there's a million ways you could do this. I just want you to feel encouraged um, and try this as an expression of the pageant of your life. Thank you. Okay, everybody, I'm finishing up. Um, I've got my pieces collaged together. I want you to notice that I'm that I'd like you to think about looking at it from many different ways. 
and um, use Romare Bearden's uh, composition or the way he arranged things as a guide to be free and interpret this project in a way that seems true to you. I ended up putting everything on a um, file folder background because as one of my fellow artists on the roster, Bob Miller, told me that I use way too much glue, that you just need a little dot. <laughs> but after this dries, I might put it under a book um, so that it dries flat. I can see where the fall colors, even in pictures of a forest fire started by lightning, um, a map of our country, children and people, pilots in masks, um, hands of someone praying, overlapping articles and charts about the world economy. D to me, this is an expression of um, sometimes a, a junky, gritty little day, um, but we stay steady and we do the best we can. We work hard and we we look to make the world a little bit more beautiful. Um, that's what this is telling me about my the pageant of my day. So I'm fairly satisfied with this once it dries. I enjoyed this working with you today and I'll be doing a few more. So come back and see what we've got to create. <laughs>